Hello and welcome back to Code Pixel Fortress. Uh, yes, I'm making this right after the other video. Okay, so make height map. That that's how we make the height map. Um, we have this file called make height map that we that has a function that's called the same. Yeah, it just it that, that's how. So how does that actually work? Well, first of all, we have to seed the random generator because. If you don't seed it, then you'll get the exact same sequence of maps every single time you run it, which isn't kind of defeats the point of randomness. It turns randomness into procedural generation. In fact, we could change this later if we wanted to, to have it do procedural generation instead of randomness, but that's not the point. Um, we get a function called height map from this other file. This is actually a library that I downloaded. This is the actual algorithm that generates a raw height map. And let's go ahead and go over how it works. Here, this one pot, that's I that stands for power of two. I hadn't realized that until just now. But we want to find the high the lowest power of two that will work for the size we want. And that's because this function, this algorithm that generates these, only works by powers of two. This is the actual function down here. Um, create creatively named. So basically you pass it a width, a height, and optionally a function. Um, you can look right above it, function default f. This is the default function that modifies things by a, a you know a certain amount and we'll get to that. Uh, but you can specify your own custom one if you want to modify things differently like let's say you want to change how much it randomly goes up or down or if you want to change this to make it you know rougher terrain or smoother terrain because you can you can if I were to like add a divide by two here in fact let me go ahead and do that to demonstrate if I add a divide by two there that actually didn't appear to oh you know what that didn't make much of a difference you know why because the way I modify the output of this program the way I modify the output of this program means that pretty much any value you put in there will equal kind of the same thing in the end. Let's try dividing by 20. Yeah, see, it ends up being the same thing. It's a little smoother. It's a little smoother. You might notice that we're not getting as much variation as we were. Oh, but the moment I said that, we started getting a bunch of variation. So, you know, hey, that's the nature of random generators. I also just noticed that I put 2006 when I meant to say 2000. With height and optional function to use, and then it does this, which is kind of a confusing. Basically, it's saying get the highest square that we need because we need a power of two square for this to work and we ex execute the diamond square algorithm that's the name of this algorithm the diamond square algorithm and then clip it to the actual size that you want and I'm not gonna bother trying to explain this primarily because I'd have to figure it out I haven't bothered to figure it out and it just clips the map down to size it also sets the width and height into these two W and H, you know, width and height values, just in case you needed to know that, which, you know, considering you specified the width and height when you created it, you probably don't really need those, but then again, they could come in handy, so I'm not going to criticize it. Uh, this is a little helper function to create a table. Uh, I'm guessing that's to create the two-dimensional table. I'm not exactly, I'm, I'm not paying too close attention. Then we have the square step and the diamond step, and these are with how diamond squared generation works and then we have the main function which starts out by creating a map um, that just says width and height are the size oh yes because those values are actually needed for the generation methods then it creates an empty table then we have to seed the four values which in this case let's see what's a D in this case I'm not sure where D comes from right here Oh, D, size, size. And D stands for level of detail, if I remember correctly, because this is a fractal algorithm. And you can look up stuff about fractals if you're interested. Basically, they're repeating patterns that you can go further into depth or further out or, you know, whatever. And it just kind of constantly repeats on itself. And it's kind of hard to explain. I'm sure someone else has explained it way better but you create these initial values. Oh yes, oh okay, there we go. Yeah, because it's using f. f is the um, random function. So it's passing these values because what f works on is it takes the map that you have, the x, the y, which in this case the d is also the size of our map. So you're saying zero, zero, so that's the top left corner, zero and the maximum, so that's the top right corner, 
this is the bottom left and bottom right. And so you're going to the four corners and you're setting them to a random value. And h is zero because so, we're starting at zero. And of course, if you modified this, you could actually modify this to give us different kinds of map. In fact, I could like I could set one corner to 100, and that would make it so that we always have a mountain in the top left corner, or you know stuff like that. And so you could you could really mess with how it works by doing stuff there. And then the actual algorithm is you do squares and diamonds and squares, and then you cut the detail in half and do it again and basically the first pass you go through basically what happens is you go further into the map with every pass I'm gonna pull up a web page real fast to demonstrate this okay so I just looked it up real fast to find an example and so the diamond square patterns are it's all based on vertices by the way first of all it's based on vertices instead of cells so we're taking a look at each one of these corners not the individual cells anyhow you start out with the four corners at their random values then you get a random value in the middle based off the average of those values and a tiny bit of variation then the diamond step is to take these points on the outside and modify them randomly then the next step is to go for each of these and do the kind of the same thing then you repeat that and you know it takes a while because it's a lot of points and then you well Actually, yeah, that's done. In this particular example, now it's done. So now you can combine all those points to get your terrain. In this particular case, it looks, yeah, in this particular case, they're using triangles. Of course, in my case, we're using cells and squares. But as you can see, you end up with a procedurally generated height map. And then, of course, that just gives you a height map. It doesn't give you, doesn't give you anything else, really. And I try to explain how it works, but to be honest, I don't quite understand this part myself either. And it's not really necessary to know how that works, except that it does in kind of some basics, like that you can modify the function that's used for the randomness. You know, you can change it up. You can vary how it reacts to things to make very different appearances, but all based on the same kind of procedure. So now to go on to my modifications of this. Um, first of all, I have a min function which takes one of these tables of values and returns the minimum of it. This one takes and does the maximum. So, you know, the lowest point on the map and the highest point on the map. Then we have the make height map function itself. It makes a height map using 960 by 540 divided by 5. That's because the screen resolution that I run at and actually, if I go look at this real fast, I can show you right here, width and height, 960, 540. I go by, I go by that. I know it's kind of a, not as standard, it's, it's 16 by 9, but it's not really a standard resolution. The reason I go with that is that actually um, 720p is actually just a little too big for my laptop to render properly. And so I kind of, I try to, I try to always make sure that something I make by default goes at a resolution that the smallest screens could handle and then you know obviously the moment you boot it up you can be like oh, I want to go in this other resolution for this one in particular though I'm thinking I'm gonna keep it at 960 by 540 then again I'm not sure I guess I could I could make it so that you could you could scale it up but it would be just a rescale that internally it will still always run at this resolution because I think that's a nice value it's it's not too small but it's also small enough to keep things from getting too expensive processor wise because if I start upping things too much then it'll be too much for the game to process all at once anyhow we check if the minimum is below zero which it usually will be considering we started out with our random values based on zero and they could only have gone up by 0.5 and they also could have gone down by 0.5 so there's a pretty damn good chance the minimum is going to be less than zero. So we take and subtract every value by the minimum, if it's under zero, to give us everything zero and up. And that's a minus, minus, a minus. So it's going to be positive. And then we normalize the range of values between zero and 169. And the way we do this is simply by multiplying them by 169 and dividing them by the maximum. And if you want to know why that works, it's it's basic algebra. Just look up algebra. And that's that's all we do is we just take this, 
you know this diamond square algorithm complexity thingy and we just modify it slightly and that makes the beautiful wonderful maps and uh, let's see I want to show you something real fast okay so this 169 value let's change that to 255 and watch what happens you can see that now we have a much bigger ice cap and that's because now the maximum value that's on the map is 255 so there will always be a 255 and there will be a certain amount of range that's close to that on the map so you can see we have much bigger ice caps and much bigger ice areas in general alternately if I were to set this down to something like a hundred I believe a hundred is we can't even have ice at this point so this would be like a tropical lands perhaps yeah at this point we can't even have ice if I set it to like 120 so there'll be tiny ice caps with none of the uh, pure white ice of course they can still be fairly big it's still possible but it's less likely and 169 was back where I had it so now we're back to where I normally keep it which is wow quite a lot of ice I might did I modify anything else and forget about it because the amount of ice I'm generating is making me think that I ooh that is pretty I like that one I think I might want to make the amount of ice we have less or something eh, that's all stuff that can be tweaked later for now though that's the basics of how it generates height maps. Thanks for watching. As always, see you in space.